Here we are. Here we are, guys, in part 32 of this story. In the land of waves, our favorite blonde encounters the QB. Watch the subsequent events unfold as Naruto uses the power that was sealed inside of him on the day of his birth. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Now, let's begin. As one of the walls of the wooden passage gave away, the two teams emerged into a dimly lit passage beneath the surface of the mountain. They had successfully infiltrated the lair of Orochimaru in the land of seas. Now came the hard part, accomplishing their objectives without causing too much trouble. Hinata, do you see anything? Asked Yamato as Hinata activated her eyes. I can see through these walls. The passage we are in extends for about 300 meters before reaching a staircase that leads down a few levels, explained Hinata as her Byakugan extended her vision further, giving her a look at what lay ahead. I can make out a few passages below us, but there is too much rock between us and them for me to get an accurate look. Any resistance? Asked Yamato. Yes, I can see a few traps up ahead in this corridor. They look to be triggered via pressure plates so if we avoid the plates, we should be fine, spoke Hinata as she led the way for the first corridor, pointing out the plates that activated the traps and guiding them safely through the entryway into the lair. Based on Hinata's discovery of multiple pathways in the facility, Yamato hypothesized that this was the first level of the lair, designed to do nothing more than stop people from entering with a series of traps, which if they didn't have the Byakugan, would prove rather effective against most intruders. The prisoners would be in the lower levels with the laboratories, living quarters, and other facilities being between them and the prisoners. Moving down into the second level of the base, Hinata saw that the arrays of traps present on the first level had disappeared, supporting Yamato's hypothesis and they continued down another hallway until reaching a second staircase that led downward. Stepping out into the third level, they were in a rather large room with a walkway leading through the middle of the room, bordered on either side by large bonds. Huh? What's that I sense? Thought Naruto as his sensory abilities picked up some form of malcontent towards the group in that chamber. The blonde made a quick signal to the rest of the group, all of them picking up some sort of presence in the room due to either chakra sensing or an out-of-place scent. The team took formation as they crossed the room, Hinata taking up the middle, Haku the rear, and Zabuza taking point. Everyone else was distributed between them. As they reached the threshold, they were greeted by another flight of stairs, leading down. Thankfully, they faced no confrontation in the third level, but they were all certain someone, or something, was aware of their presence, putting everyone on guard. As they reached the fourth level in the lair, there were various chambers lining the corridors. As they came upon a slightly open door, they could see a faint light. Escaping the chamber. Yamato made a quick hand signal and Haku nodded, having been familiar with the Anbu style of signaling. The ice user formed a few mirrors just on the inside of the door, giving him a look inside. On the inside of the door, there looked to be numerous scrolls and journals lining desks and shelves. Yamato Teiko, I can see chakra signatures two levels directly below us, announced Hinata. She focused her Byakugan a bit harder to get a clearer picture through the surrounding earth that the base was carved out of. I can see what appear to be both prisoners and guards below. I see, replied Yamato as he took a moment to think. Right, this is where we'll be splitting up. I'm going to send the retrieval team down to rescue the prisoners while my team remains here to gather what information we can regarding what's going on in this base. However, now that I think about it, Sai your skills are better suited for up here. So in that case, I'll need someone to. I'll go, Yamato Teiko, D by O. Volunteered Naruto. Very well, Yamato nodded. You, Hinata, Kiba, and Sakura will proceed two levels below to rescue what prisoners are down there. Myself, Zabuza, Haku, and Sai will remain up here to sort through and find any relevant information. Once you've verified that you have every prisoner and that none of them are enemies, meet back here in 30 minutes. Also, be sure to plant those explosives. They will be most effective when concentrated in the lower levels of the base. Hi. Address Naruto, Hinata, Kiba, and Sakura, before taking off down the passage and proceeding on towards the lower levels. So far, so good, thought Yamato. However, I have a bad feeling it's only a matter of time before we encounter some resistance. Below the island and ocean surface, in a cold and damp cell, a lonely girl could be seen huddled in a corner, her head buried into her knees. Said girl had tattered clothes, and cracked glasses. However, the most striking feature of her was her bright red hair, that even dirtied, retained a vibrant shine to it. Why? 
I thought Orochimaru was going to promise to bring my family. My clan, back with the secrets from Mazushi Ogakur, thought the girl. I would have done anything to get my parents and the family they spoke of back. Why did he have to lock me in this damp cell? It's like he just tossed me aside to be that big head fish freak's little play toy. Said girl had the unfortunate pleasure of calling this damp cell home for almost two years. It was here where the scientist in charge of this facility would visit her to collect multiple blood samples, most likely as a way to try and uncover the secrets behind her bloodline. She had gone from being a promising subordinate of Orochimaru to this. Once she returned from the failed mission to Ozushi Ogakur, Orochimaru sought to have her return one more time, but it was discovered that the man she and Kabuto had encountered, Jiraiya was the name. Mentioned by Kabuto, had done something to lock her out of her ancestral home. Once that happened, Orochimaru had no more use for her and like all useless things, he just tossed her aside. Of course, she still had her bloodline which she inherited from her father's side of the family, the Nanuzumaki side, which was what stopped Orochimaru from just disposing of her outright. Instead, she was shipped to one of the research labs while research could be conducted on her and her bloodline. Once Orochimaru and his researchers got as much out of her as they could, then she would be sacrificed to aid in Orochimaru's own personal bloodline research. What this was, she wasn't entirely sure, but the fact that she was going to be sacrificed, wasn't a good sign. I wish someone would come and get me out of this hellhole, thought the girl before letting out a depressed sigh, that seemed to take a good portion of her remaining energy with it. Being a prisoner, living conditions were nowhere near ideal. She was given just enough food to support life, but besides that, all she could really do was sit in the cell and wait for the day when Amachi had enough of her and she was sent back to Orochimaru to be sacrificed. Who am I kidding? No one's coming for me. I'll never get to see my clan restored. If it wasn't for that Jiraiya guy and that blonde haired kid, then I wouldn't be here. What were they doing in my ancestors home anyways? Trying to steal their secrets? One of the guards paced past the red haired girl cell, like she had seen him do for the past two years. He just gave her a look of insignificance before returning back to his duty. The guard was a rather large and muscular man who had been in charge of taking care of the prisoners in Amachi's base. In all honesty, getting out of this cell was rather easy. She had studied some basic sealing techniques and knew how to draw one that could get her out of this cell. Even if she didn't have any ink nor was she skilled enough to write a seal with chakra alone, she still had her blood that she could use to make the seal. However, even if she found a way to escape this cell, there was no way she'd be able to overpower this man in her current condition. It was just as the guard began to walk away that a familiar chakra signature came to her attention. However, this wasn't a chakra signature that she was used to sensing. This chakra, it can't be. This chakra she sensed was one she could faintly remember, from about three years ago. The guard made another pass by her cell and the very moment he turned around, a kunai soared towards the back of his head. However, this wasn't enough to defeat him as the guard detected the kunai and turned around to catch it, only there wasn't one kunai, there were dozens. It was too late and the kunai impaled themselves into his face, killing him almost instantly. The girl couldn't believe it. The largest obstacle in the way of her freedom had just been killed with a mere flick of a kunai. I smell something over here, called out a voice as a large white dog appeared in front of her cage. The next person she saw however was even more surprising. You, she shouted, seeing the same blonde boy that she had seen in Uzu, only slightly taller and wearing a flowing red cloak with the Uzumaki spiral on it. The four Konoha ninja consisting of Yamato, Sai, Zabuza, and Haku were busy sifting through various notes and journals. So far, there were a lot of entries regarding this. Kaima project and based on what they had seen the previous night in the village, those fishmen were the results of this project. Finishing up in one office, Zabuza moved on to the next room, slowly opening the door and peeping inside. A dim light lit the room and Zabuza could make out that there were three scientists inside. At the far back of the room, there was a large tank filled to the top with water and a number of tubes and pipes coming out of the tank. Alongside the tank, there were four cylindrical glass tubes that had what looked to be half-transformed humans. And the transformations weren't pretty. One had a massive tumor sticking out of his shoulder. The former demon of the mist readied his sword. He was going to do what he did best, silent killing. In the slightest moment, Zabuza moved, swiftly moving towards the first scientist with his hand on the blade and with a single swipe of his sword cut through the necks of his first target and even the one standing close enough to the first one to be within range of Zabuza's decapitating strike. The third scientist saw his two colleagues fall. 
but was too late to even get a breath out as Zabuza's blade slashed across his neck. Zabuza-sama, called out Haku as the ice using shinobi entered the room. It's too late for these people, said Zabuza as he took out his blade and slashed through the cylindrical tanks, putting the innocent victims of these horrific experiments to rest. Just as Zabuza turned to leave, a pair of eyes peered out of the large water tank in the middle, staring at the ex-swordsman of the hidden mist with great interest. Wow, I can't believe our luck that we actually found you, said Naruto as he eyed the red-headed girl in the cell in front of him. What the hell are you doing here? shouted the redhead. Is that any way to thank the one who's here to rescue you? asked Naruto. You're the reason I'm in here, retorted the young Uzumaki girl. Do you two know each other? asked Kiba. We met once in Uzushiogakur, said Naruto. What the hell were you even doing there, you grave robber? Sure, just because my clan's dead doesn't give you the right to go and pillage everything that belonged to them, argued the girl. What do you mean what was I doing there? You were the one trying to steal stuff for that snake team, Orochimaru, replied Naruto. We're so going to be detected, thought Sakura, Kiba, and Hinata. Can you two argue later? shouted Sakura trying to stop the arguing, but only adding more noise to the current situation. Fine, stand back, replied Naruto as he formed a Rasengan and smashed the lock to pieces before Sakura ran in to check on the health of the girl. She's malnourished and low on energy and chakra, but her health seems to be okay, said Sakura. So who are you, really? asked the girl with a hint of venom towards Naruto. Naruto. Uzumaki Naruto, Naruto introduced. You. Uzumaki? asked a now surprised girl. Yeah. I may not have the signature red hair, but I can assure you that I am an Uzumaki through my mother, said Naruto. Prove it, replied the girl. Come on, we really don't have time for this, egged on Sakura. Sakura-san, there's a few prisoners over here. They look like villagers and fishermen, called out Hinata from another corner of the prison. Sakura left Naruto and the Uzumaki girl to themselves as she went to check on the other prisoners. Naruto reached to the miniature scroll on his necklace and made a quick hand seal before it promptly expanded. This is the Uzumaki family tree, said Naruto. There's a blood seal on it that only an Uzumaki can open it with. As he said that, Naruto undid the blood seal and unraveled the tree, revealing his heritage in the tree of the land of Iron Uzumakis. The girl's eyes widened as she saw Naruto's name and an image of him on the tree of the head family. Now just place a drop of your blood on this seal and it'll tell you where you are in clan. Not having much to lose, Karen did as instructed. To say Naruto was surprised when it was revealed that Karen's mother was the younger sister of Uzumaki Hayashi, Naruto's maternal grandfather, was an understatement. Naruto saw the name Uzumaki Karen materialize on the tree, not too far from Naruto's. Welcome to the family, Karen Nijin, smiled Naruto. This in turn caused Karen to smile back at the warm smile and energy that Naruto was giving off. If you two are done settling family matters, we're all set to go. We just need you to make some clones to help carry the prisoners out, said Sakura. Right, agreed Naruto as he made enough clones to carry the prisoners. Let's set these explosives and get back to Yamato Tanko. Handing a few explosive notes to Kiba and Hinata, the three of them quickly went to work littering the lowest levels of the base with explosives. Naruto had been sure to make enough and they were very liberal about using them. Well well, Orochimaru-sama never said anything about Konoha Ninja, called out a voice from the door. Everyone's attention turned to see three ninja in their way wearing auto headbands, indicating that their allegiance was not to Amachi, but to Orochimaru himself. I'd say we're in luck. I was just dying to kill something, another ninja said as black markings began to take over the bodies of the three auto ninja. Sakura, we'll make an opening. Once we do, I want the three of you to make your way to Yamato Tanko and let him know that we've recovered the prisoners. I'll stay down here and once you're all out of here, I'll take these guys out, said Naruto. Oh sure, trying to be a hero are you? Akamaru and I aren't going to let you have all the fun you know? Smirked Kiba. It's not that Kiba. I have something that can take care of these guys, but I can't do it with you guys and the prisoners around. Besides, what if there are more enemies up ahead? Said Naruto. Fine, just make sure you catch up, said Kiba. Naruto-kun. Don't worry Hinata-chan, I'll be fine. I promise you that, declared Naruto as they prepared to break through the three auto ninja who were now displaying the first stages of the cursed seal transformation. No, why did it have to be him, sighed a defeated Zabuza mentally. 
he had detected a presence in the tank and quickly moved to eliminate the possibility of a sneak attack. The glass on the tank shattered and water spilled out across the floor. But then a young man began to rise, forming from the water itself. Unfortunately, a pair of pants didn't form from the water either. Haku braced himself for the battle but Zabuza was now smacking himself on the head repeatedly. Well if it isn't Zabuza Senpai, the water boy said. Zabuza Sama, you know him? asked Haku. Sadly. This is Hozuki Suigetsu. I met him when he was just a kid before leaving Hiragakur. His brother, Mangatsu, was a member of the Seven Swords. Last I heard, he's still working with that bastard Yagura along with the remaining three of the seven who haven't defected, explained Zabuza. If I remember correctly, you had a habit of trying to chop off the limbs of anything. That had them. And you constantly bugged by about trying to get a hold of my sword. Sui Getsu just smirked that Zabuza had such a fond memory of him. Now why don't you just give me that sword of yours and I can hack my way out of this place. Hell no. But that these instead, Zabuza said as he reached into his pack, taking a storage scroll and unsealing a pair of black hanbu style pants. What's the problem in here, called out Yamato as he entered the room, preparing to attack Sui Getsu if the Hozuki tried anything funny. Nothing, we just met one of Zabuza Sama's old friends, smiled Haku, prompting Zabuza's head to drop. Are you an enemy or a prisoner? Asked Shimato. I've been trapped in a tank for months while those scientist guys tried to infuse my bloodline into those fish freaks. I think that counts as a prisoner, said Suigetsu. I can't detect any hints of him lying, thought Yamato. Fine, we'll take you along, but I'm going to have Zabuza keep an eye on you. If you try anything funny, I'm giving him permission to do what he needs to do. A glint appeared in Zabuza's eye. He didn't like the idea of having to watch Suigetsu. But he now knew that if the boy made any move for his sword, he had nothing stopping him from hacking that watery head off the boy. The rest of the team should be rendezvousing with us any moment. Once that's done, we can set the explosives and leave, said Yamato. Shadow clone jutsu, exclaimed Naruto as he created about two dozen clones and rushed the three cursed seal auto ninja with everyone following closely behind. However, that didn't go quite as planned as the curse seal on one of the auto shinobi quickly advanced to level 2 and his arm transformed into what resembled a large axe. Naruto's clones didn't stand a chance as he began to hack through them. Finally, after taking another swing, his axe was met with the blade of Naruto's sword. It's rather damp down here and there is a lot of water puddle on the floor. I wonder if there's enough. Water, he nodded though before deciding to go through with it. Naruto-kun. Naruto quickly glanced back upon hearing Hinata and saw her beginning a jutsu. Disengaging from his opponents, Naruto retreated and the Auto Shinobi began to advance before. Sutan, Great Waterfall Vortex. There was enough water present in the prison for Hinata to form a small, yet still powerful, water vortex and send it crashing into the three Auto Nin. Sending them flying out of the prison and into another room that was much larger and much more open. Good job Hinata, let's go exclaimed Sakura as their opportunity to make a break for it came. You sure you're going to be alright against them, Naruto? Don't worry Sakura-chan, I'll be fine. I promise, exclaimed Naruto, flashing the nice guy pose. Nodding, everyone with the exception of Naruto made their break to regroup with the rest of the team. As the three Auto Ninja began to pick themselves up off the floor, the rage induced from being washed away like that had activated the full stage 2 transformations of their seals and now they looked anything but human. The one with the axe for a hand was hunched over, both hands now sharp blades. There was another one who was standing up straight and looked rather lanky. Coming out of his hands were what appeared to be sharp claws. The last one kind of resembled a sort of dragon-like creature with wings, horns, and a scaly tail. I can't wait to rip their heads off, growled the dragon one. I'm sorry to say, but you won't be going anywhere, announced Naruto as he was now standing between them and the exit of the room. This should be far enough away from the seals. I just wish it weren't so enclosed in here. A tailed beast ball would wipe the floor with these guys, and probably bring the entire base down. Oh well. Naruto drew his blade and began channeling wind chakra into the blade. The axe ninja made the first move, slashing at Naruto hoping to decapitate him in a single slice, but Naruto ducked underneath the attack. The Clawed Ninja used this opportunity to try and skewer Naruto with his claws, but Naruto brought the blunt side of his sword down upon the claws, forcing them to dig into the ground at his feet. The Claw Ninja tried to pull his claws free and Naruto used the momentum from this to jam the hilt of his sword into the back of the neck of the Axe Ninja who was just behind him now. 
In doing so, Naruto was able to score a shallow cut across the chest of the claw ninja before jumping back and retaking his stance, preparing for the next attack. Something feels odd, yet familiar about the energy these guys are giving off, thought Naruto. Take a look at where the cursed seal on their neck is, commented Kurama. It was then that Naruto saw it. Is that natural energy? Yeah, but it's extremely unstable. Which probably explains the huge amounts of anger and bloodlust these guys are giving off. So Orochi team is experimenting with natural energy? That can't be good. Uro Senen's going to want to know about it, thought Naruto before making a good amount of clones. Just keep them busy for a bit. I want to find out a bit more how these things are using natural energy and I need sage mode in order to feel the natural energy better. Seeing as Naruto's clones weren't fighting in a suicidal manner, they were able to hold their own fairly well. Against their opponents and even score a few hits, only making them angrier. From his cover behind the door, Naruto stood up, having entered sage mode. A little under a minute. I've got on reducing the time it takes to enter sage mode. Where did that bastard go? Growled one of the cursed seal ninja as all the clones dispelled. Right here, replied Naruto, as he swung with his fist at the one with the axes for arms. Said auto ninja moved his axes to block Naruto's punch, however he wasn't expecting the significant increase in strength behind Naruto's punch as he was rocketed into the walls and the blade of one of his axes shattered. Unstable natural energies and understatement, thought Naruto. It's supposed to mix with your chakra at its core. The natural energy's mixing at the point of that seal and it's not stable. So not only is the balance off, but the distribution of the sage chakra is screwed up as well, commented Kurama. I say it's time to end this. Agreed. Now, there's something I've wanted to try, thought Naruto before swiftly moving in between the three auto ninja. Uzumaki style, whirlpool slash. The movement of Naruto's sword was all a blur as it moved in a whirling motion around him, unleashing a swift and powerful slash that carved straight through the three cursed seal auto ninja, and the wall supporting the room. Naruto dove out of the room just in time to avoid the roof that was caving down to entomb the three auto ninja. Wow, that was a lot more than I expected, said a pleasantly surprised Naruto. You're still in sage mode. Of course your attacks are more powerful, Baka. Retorted Kurama. Well you don't have to sound so harsh about it. Argued Naruto. What do you expect? I can't come out because of that root spy that keeps calling you dickless. Responded Kurama. Yeah yeah, I'll find a way to make it out for you. Let's just catch up with everyone else, said Naruto. Yamato Teiko. Sakura called out as they rendezvoused with the remainder of the team. A mass of orange carrying prisoners followed closely behind followed by Akiba who appeared to have a small scratch or two, courtesy of the few guards they encountered on the way up. We have located and secured the prisoners, and the Uzumaki girl who goes by the name of Karen. I see. Good work. Were you met with any resistance? Asked Yamato. We met three guards who possessed a cursed seal. Naruto remained behind to take care of them, said Sakura. As on cue, a slight shaking was felt through the base. 500 Ryo says that was Naruto, wagered Kiba. Sure, there's no way we would be able to feel dickless this deep in any ways, said a smiling sigh. Ignoring them, Sakura turned to Yamato. Tanko, what's the progress here? We are almost done. Only two more labs to go and we'll be ready to leave. We've met some resistance, but nothing more than a few guards, said Yamato. Sakura noticed a white-haired boy with odd purple eyes and shark-like teeth behind Zabuza wearing nothing more than a pair of pants and eyeing the blade on Zabuza's back with a lustful passion. Who's he? Hozuki Suigetsu, Suigetsu introduced. He was a prisoner that we discovered and freed, commented Yamato. I see, commented Sakura. All the prisoners match the description of the fishermen and villagers who went missing recently. I see. Hinata? Asked Yamato. There are no more chakra signatures below us except for one which is rapidly approaching. That signature belongs to your teammate. Any more prisoners you're looking for have most likely died in the experimentation. To everyone's surprise, the report didn't come from Hinata but rather Karen who was on her feet being supported by one of Naruto's clones. She's right. I see no more chakra signatures below us besides Naruto-kun, commented Hinata. But what's up with Naruto's chakra? Huh? What do you mean? Is something wrong with Naruto's chakra? Asked Yamato. Normally, his chakra is blue but with a slight red tint. I can see the small tint of red, but there's also a bright green color in the chakra, said Hinata. Green chakra? Asked Sakura. Great, 
what did Naruto get himself into this time? Moments later, the subject of the conversation appeared at the end of the hall. I told you I'd be right behind you, called out Naruto. Naruto-kun? Asked a worried Hinata. Huh? Is something wrong Hinata-chan? Asked a confused Naruto. Naruto, what happened to your eye? Asked Sakura. I swear, if you picked up some sort of disease. Wait, eyes? Oh right, I'm still in sage mode, realized Naruto. Sage mode? Question just about everyone. Yeah. It's something I learned with Uro Senin. I can use the chakra from the environment around me to augment my own. I needed to use it to try and figure something out, said Naruto. Huh? What's this? Everyone looked at Naruto confused as he turned towards a blank wall. Naruto knocked on the wall, further earning a few questioning looks. There's something behind here, I can feel it, said Naruto. What are you talking about, dickless? Asked Sai. No, he's right. It's faint, but I can sense something behind that wall, said Karen. I can see a single person inside. It looks like a young woman, but her chakra signature is faint, commented Hinata. So now how do we get to her? Rasengan. You just had to ask, Kiba, commented Sakura. Upon entering the room, they were in a rather large laboratory with a few tools and instruments around the edges, but what really caught everyone's attention was the lone surgery table in the middle with a girl lying on her back. She had purple hair that came down to her neck. A white sheet was draped over her torso and a small cart with what appeared to be surgical instruments sat next to the table, but what really stood out were the patches of scales on her head and neck. Yamato motioned to Sakura and with Hinata aiding her, the two Kunoichi proceeded to check the girl. The rest of the team then proceeded to search the room for any documents and or journals. What's this? Commented Naruto as he picked up a leather-bound book. Within moments, everyone was listening to Naruto to see what he would read. Turning to the first page in the book, Naruto began reading. May 14, 1093 I have been commissioned by Orochimaru to investigate discover, and create new genetic combinations that result in the expression of what Shinobi Dima's bloodline limits. He had graciously granted me this facility and a few of his recourses so that I may begin my research in the name of science. With there not being much more on that page, Naruto flipped to the next entry. July 7, 1093. Orochimaru has granted me with two potential bloodlines to observe and examine with the condition that I do not damage the subjects. One is a young girl approximately 13 years in age physical description consists of red hair and red eyes she is approximately 149 centimeters in height with a weight of 35.4 kilograms she is of the uzumaki clan and possesses a bloodline not known to the uzumakis meaning she got it from the paternal non-uzumaki side of her family the other is a young boy 14 years in age physical description consists of wide hair and purple eyes with distinctive shark-like teeth Subject is 162 centimeters in height with a weight of 52.1 kilograms. He is of the Hozuki clan of Kiragakura and possesses the hydrification technique, the signature bloodline of the clan. Everyone turned to Karen and Suigetsu. You've been trapped here for three years? Asked Kiba out of shock. May, you lose track of time, shrugged Suigetsu. Karen just looked down before sending a glance to Naruto. Orochimaru sent me here because I was no longer a use to him, commented Karen. Once I could no longer access the archives in Rizushigakur, he just tossed me aside like anyone else. Uzu? That's right, remembered Naruto. I'm sorry. I never thought this would happen, but you have to understand that there's no way I could have let Orochimaru get his hands on the scrolls in there. Don't worry, we'll get you out of here and then I'll find some way to make it up to you personally. But why did you go along with someone like Orochimaru? Karen looked down solemnly. When I was a little girl, my mother used to tell me these amazing stories about the Uzumaki clan and her life in Rizushigakur before she was forced to flee when they were invaded at the beginning of the Second Shinobi World War. She had intended to make it to Konoha with the rest of her clan, but she got separated and ended up in Kusagakur. She had always assumed that she was the last one left, until I was born. However, when I was seven, my mother and father were killed and I was orphaned. I grew up in Kusagakur and eventually became a Janan there until Orochimaru found me and offered me my mother in this clan that I had only heard amazing stories about. All I had to do was help him get into the archives in Rizushiogakur and he said that he would bring my parents back and help revive the Uzumaki clan. But then... You bumped into me and Urosenin when you were in Uzu and we blocked you from accessing the blood seals that secured the archives, finished Naruto. 
After that, he found that he had no more use for me, besides my bloodline. I don't know what exactly he's doing, but he's really gone off the deep end with his own bloodline research, commented Karen. In all honesty, if you hadn't shown up, I would likely have been taken back to his own facility and sacrificed for my bloodline. Sacrificed? Gasped everyone. I, I didn't know. Had I known what would have happened, Naruto said before being cut off by Karen. Can it? I'm still mad at you, but I am grateful to you for getting me out of that damn cell. But if you really want to apologize, you can help me bring back the Uzumaki clan, said Karen with her energy suddenly returning out of nowhere. I think she's implying that she wants Dickless to mate with her and produce offspring with Uzumaki blood. Wham! Sai found himself on the receiving end of a strong right hook as he crashed into a nearby solid stone wall. Everyone just sweat dropped. That's not what I was thinking you moron. There's no way I have children with blonde over here. Besides, we're way too closely related and I'm not resorting to inbreeding. That's right, I forgot, said Sai weakly as he picked himself out of the rubble. Dickless has no penis to reproduce with. That's it, I'm going to kill you, growled Naruto now flaring a considerable amount of QB chakra. He felt a calming hand on his shoulder and the chakra quickly receded as he turned to see a smiling Hinata reassuring him. Calmly, Hinata walked over towards. I apologize for Naruto-kun's behavior, she said sweetly, and a little too sweetly, before slamming a juke and strike straight into Sai's unprotected balls and following up with a swift strike to the root agent's chin. But don't you dare ever make fun of what is rightfully mine. Especially when I know for a fact that Naruto is more man than you'll ever be. Silence filled the room as everyone just stared at the usually calm and gentle Hinata, and Sai, who had now lost consciousness due to the extreme pain he was in. Did Hinata? Sakura was the first to speak. You do realize what exactly that statement's implying? Questioned Kurama with a perverted look creeping onto his face. Your little vixen's been peeping on you with those eyes of hers. Shut up you or Okitsune. I don't want to hear it, shouted Naruto. You can't deny it. Hell, I can smell the hormones from in here and even I don't need that to know that she's in heat. Now if I were you, I'd take advantage of this situation. I foresee a fun night of hot and steamy kit making in your near future. Fucking Privet, cried Naruto in his mind. Even without her asenin, he couldn't get away from the damned perverts. Then again, being around Jiraiya for so long had practically turned him into one. Suddenly. Hinata broke out of her womanly trance of rage and immediately went a shade of red brighter than anyone even thought possible. DD did IJ just SS say that? She said, turning to the group and receiving a stupefied nod from everyone. Hinata then did the only thing she could in this situation, she fainted. After a few minutes, Hinata regained consciousness, despite still being deeply embarrassed by her little outburst. She slunk to the back of the group as Haku went on to read the journal while Naruto cooled down. Sai was still unconscious and Sakura was going to make sure he stayed that way for some time for his own good. November 19, 1094. I have discovered a young girl with a most fascinating genetic mutation. She possesses a few genetic mutations that resemble those of aquatic organisms. Unfortunately, they appear to be recessive and remain inactive. I will conduct further experiments to try and activate those genes. I will call this, Project Kaima. The subject is identified by the name Isaribi and is most identifiable by her purple hair. She is approximately 21 years in age. Everyone looked over at the girl on the table. So that must be Isaribi? January 2nd, 1095. I have successfully managed to activate a few of the genes. Subject has shown some changes in physical appearance and scales have been appearing on parts of her head, neck, and torso. March, 7, 1095. I have made another major breakthrough. I have managed to activate all the mutant genes within her DNA. The results are astounding as she has taken on what I deem as the full Kaima form. Her entire body is now covered fully in green scales and there are fins that run vertically along her neck, spine, and also forearms. Furthermore, she possesses webbing between her fingers and her feet have elongated to the point where they resemble flippers. However, the transformation destabilized and she has reverted back to her previous form. Following the recession of the Kaima form, subject was in extreme pain and in critical condition. I managed to revive her and plan to attempt to induce the full Kaima form once she has sufficiently recovered. Everyone was disgusted at the last parts of the entry. Had this researcher really pushed this girl they had found to the brink of death and brought her back only to repeat the same thing over again also he could satisfy his desire to sum up with some bloodline? April 2nd 1095 
subject has managed to achieve a full kaima transformation and has maintained the form for a sustained period of time. It appears as if I have successfully activated the genes that induce the kaima transformation. I will now begin to implant the genes responsible for the kaima transformation in other subjects in hopes of further researching this potential bloodline. Haka read through a few more entries in the journal before coming to the final entry. May 16, 1096, announced Haku. Wait, that was yesterday, wasn't it? Asked Kiba, getting a nod from Haku. Development on the Kaima has reached a standstill. By now, I have managed to incorporate the Kaima genes successfully into 24 other subjects, however attempts to improve the Kaima form have proven unsuccessful. 14 subjects have been lost in the experimentation process. I have sent subject number 21 into town to scope out some more prospective test subjects and I intend to incorporate the Kaima genes into the remaining prisoners inside my holding cells. Orochi Marusama is expected to make a visit tomorrow and I expect he will be most pleased with my work. Regardless, the initial specimen, Isaribi, has proven to be as much use to me as possible. I can no longer obtain any more useful results while keeping her alive. The day after Orochi Marusama's visit, I intend to dissect her in order to obtain as much possible data regarding the Kaima form and the potentials it has for improvement. That's not good news, said Yamato. So that girl on the table, Isaribi, mentioned Sakura in a hushed voice. She was. It appears we arrived just in time, T by O, exclaimed Naruto. To save her from being experimented on for one last time, yes, and it also appears we were just in time to stop this scientist from experimenting on the rest of the prisoners, but it appears as if there's a high likelihood that Orochimaru himself is in the base, commented Yamato. I believe we've scavenged as much information as we can from the base and we've managed to locate and retrieve as many prisoners as possible. Naruto, think you can make another clone and grab Isaribi? Asked Sakura. It appears as if she's under anesthesia so she should be out for some time still. Already ahead of you, commented a clone, who had the unconscious purple-haired girl on his back. Right. Kiba, grab Sai, ordered Yamato, getting a groan from Kiba as the Inuzuka reluctantly grabbed the unconscious Sai. Let's go. It was a quick journey back towards their point of entry into the base. However, they were soon met with resistance when they re-entered the room with a walkway and pools of water on either side of the walkways. I think you all have overstayed your welcome," called out a man wearing a black muscle shirt and small clear glasses that accompanied his sinister smirk on his face. Amachi-san is currently in an important meeting and cannot be disturbed. I'll ask you only once to surrender quietly. Yeah? And what can one guy do against the seven of us? Retorted Kiba. Make that eight. I wouldn't mind hacking this guy apart after he and that freaky scientist threw me in that tank," said Suigetsu. Anyone got an extra blade to loan me? You know him? Asked Yamato. His name is Tsurugimi Sumi, said Suigetsu. Suddenly, something came to the minds of Naruto, Sakura, Kiba, and Hinata. They had heard that name somewhere before. Hey, wasn't he on that traitor Kabuto's team during the first Chunin exams? Yeah, I remember now. He forfeited though before the fight even began, commented Kiba. That must mean he's pretty weak. And besides, there are eight of us, only one of H, M. Kiba soon ate his words as nine of the Kaima creatures rose from the pools surrounding them. Now I'll only say this once more. Surrender, said Misumi. And leave you and this Amachi guy to experiment on these people? I don't think so, shouted Naruto, speaking for the group. We need to find a way to break through these guys without letting them through to the prisoners, said Yamato. Sakura, you and Hinata pull the prisoners back into the hallway and don't let any enemies through. Hinata keep an eye behind you guys. Even though we've taken care of anything behind us, I wouldn't be surprised if something came up from behind. So does anyone have a sword I can borrow? Asked Suigetsu. Zabuza Senpai? Fine, here, said Zabuza, unsealing a disappointing training sword from a scroll he had on him and giving it to the Hozuki. May, it's not one of the seven swords, but so long as it cuts, shrugged Suigetsu. Wanting to cut loose for the first time since being thrown in that tank. Sui Getsu engaged one of the Kamas and looked as if he was going to score a fatal blow with the first strike, until the sword met scale and was stopped in its tracks. This thing can't cut worth shit. Complained Sui Getsu. What the hell are you talking about? That blade could slice that mouth of yours clean off your face. Even though it's a training blade, I keep all my swords in top condition. Defended Zabuza. You just suck as a swordsman. Now watch how it's done. 
Zabuza moved swiftly to cut the same Kaima which Suigetsu had failed on. His blade did slightly better than the Hozuki's but even still, an attack that should have cleaved straight through a brick wall, only one about an inch or two. There's something odd about their skin. It's hard and strong and even I couldn't cut through, said Zabuza. Makuten, binding branches, called out Yamato as his arm transformed into a tree and branches shot out of his arm and immobilized three Kaimas. However, the bindings were short-lived as the Kaimas burst out of the bindings, using the fins they had on the side of their arms as blades to cut through the wooden bindings. And their fins appear to be like swords. Humph, you're telling me, grunted Kiba as he clutched his now bleeding arm. He and Akamaru had attempted a Gatsuga on one of the Kaima, only for the Kaima to take a swing at Akamao. Kiba took the hit for his canine partner, resulting in the gash on his arm. Hey, a Byakugan. You might make a decent test subject for Amachi-san, grinned Misumi as he made a break for Hinata and Sakura while everyone else was busy fending off the Kaimas, who were proving much harder to kill than they initially suspected. Misumi swiped at Hinata with a knife blade, only for Hinata to duck bend backwards and avoid the strike, responding with a Jushu strike. However, to Hinata's surprise, Misumi's body contorted in an unnatural way and he completely contorted around Hinata's strike before wrapping his body around her arm and then entangling around the rest of her body. What is this? thought Hinata. No one's body should be able to bend like this. Hey, you like it? It's my soft physique modification technique that allows me to stretch and twist any part of my body. You won't be getting out of this anytime soon and once the Kaima are done with your friends, I'll present you and your bloodline as a present to Amachizen, grinned Misumi. Hinata, shouted Naruto as he saw the predicament his girlfriend was in, just as he dodged another Kaima attack. Naruto's sage mode had expired before they left the lab Isaribi was in it at this point in time, he was unable to remain still long enough to gather enough natural energy to re-enter sage mode. He could utilize some of Kurama's chakra, and with Saiyan conscious thanks to Hinata's unexpected outburst, but then there was Karen, Suigetsu, and even Orochimaru's likely to worry about. And besides, he had promised her a sen and he'd think before using Kurama's chakra and if he could handle the situation without resorting to using it, he would. I can get out of this. Just remember the technique Nahini hasn't taught you, thought Hinata as she began to focus on every tenketsu in her body and building up her chakra at them. Juken, body blow. Misumi didn't know what hit him as a massive force, originating from Hinata, knocked him off of her and sent him crashing into the wall just behind him. Nor was he expecting the excruciating pain from the following attack. Jushu, 8 trigrams, 64 bombs. Misumi felt his technique end and his body return to normal as there was now no more chakra flowing through the main parts of his body, and it wouldn't be returning anytime soon, if ever. Hinata, can you cover me for a few minutes? Called out Sakura as she sent one of the Kaima who tried attacking her flying clear across the room with a single punch. Nodding, Hinata fell back to the entrance to the hallway and Sakura retreated into the hall before pulling out a few blank scent bone and a vial of some serum. A few minutes later, Hinata, they're ready said Sakura before handing nine senbone to Hinata. I noticed something in the blood of Sanjo last night and I think they are the enzymes that keep the Kaima transformation active. I was able to isolate those enzymes and create a serum to deactivate them. I've loaded these senbone with the serum, but as we've seen their scales are hard to be broken, especially with a senbone. However, I believe with your wind chakra, you will be able to make the senbone pierce through the scale. As if right on cue. Naruto's own sword cleanly cut through the scales on a Kaima he was fighting. The slice wasn't going to be deep anyways as the Kaima had taken a step backwards to avoid most of the strike, but Naruto's wind encased sword cut cleanly through the scale armor, much to the jealousy of Suigetsu and Zabuza. Also, with the aid of your Byakugan, you have an accuracy that most of us can only dream of, said Sakura as she handed the senbone to Hinata. I'll do my best replied Hinata as she held the first senbone in hand and took aim at the one which Haku had encased in thick ice. Channeling her wind chakra into the weapon, she threw it at her target's neck and the senbone. Pierce the scales, emptying the serum into the Kaima's bloodstream. The effects were almost instantaneous as the Kaima began to transform back into a human. Awesome. It worked. Cheered Sakura. Yamato quickly realized what Sakura was doing and immobilized a Kaima near him, giving Hinata another clean shot. Like the first, this Kaima quickly returned to a human form, and if Yamato was correct, this man matched the description of one of the first missing villagers. Being the best in the group at immobilizing foes, Yamato and Haku quickly went to work, aiding Hinata's shots at the Kaima and soon, 
They were in the clear with nine more rescued prisoners being carried by Naruto clones and a broken Misumi as their prisoner. That was great work there Sakura. I'm impressed you were able to create an antidote to the Kaima transformation, complimented Yamato. Yeah, that was amazing Sakura-chan. Cheered Naruto. Now, the team of Konoha Ninja stood outside their entrance to the main facility on Demon Island. Orochimaru and the Samachi must be in another facility on the island, said Yamato. The wood user quickly made a large boat, allowing the Naruto clones to dump their baggage somewhere before dispelling. Let's cripple the facility and get out of here. I have no desire to fight Orochimaru when we have the safety of these villagers to worry about. Right. Kai, shouted Naruto, making a hand seal to activate the explosive seals within the facility. A massive explosion rocked the island as the explosives quickly went to work, destroying the laboratory and any of the remaining experiments within. Another facility on the island. Orochimaru, Kabuto, and Amachi all felt a massive tremor rip through the island as they made their way to the window of the current building they were in. When they looked outside to observe what was happening, the mountain in which the main base and research facility was built in caved in on itself, burying all of Amachi's work with it. It appears as if we've had some visitors, said Orochimaru as he, Kabuto, and Amachi quickly shunshined to a better vantage point to see what all the commotion was about. Orochimaru gazed down on the boat making its way out of the cove of the island and immediately recognized one of the people on that boat. It appears as if the QB brat has left Jiraiya's nest. I wonder how strong he's gotten. You truly have disappointed me, Amachi. Not only have you presented me with nothing interesting, but you have allowed Konoha to infiltrate and destroy this valuable research base, scorned Orochimaru. Though I must be thanking Konoha, they saved me the effort in doing what I was already going to do anyways. And not only that, but... You have allowed them to get hold of the Uzumaki girl and Hozuki boy. This truly has been a waste of my time. No. Please Orochimaru-sama, allow me to prove to you that I am worthy. I'll reclaim the Uzumaki girl and Hozuki boy and kill the Konoha ninja for you. Begged Imachi. Very well Imachi, I'll give you one last chance to prove your use to me, said Orochimaru. Thank you, Orochimaru-sama cried Amachi before turning to the cove in front of them and shunshining to the water. You're not seriously thinking of giving him another chance, questioned Kabuto. No, but he can at least be of use to me one last time. I doubt he'll be able to defeat the Konoha ninja, but perhaps he can provide me with a bit of entertainment in his final hour, chuckled Orochimaru. End chapter. Omaki, deleted scene, another super pervert emerges you do realize what exactly that statement's implying? questioned Kurama with a perverted look creeping onto his face. Your little vixen's been peeping on you with those eyes of hers. Shut up you or Okitsune, I don't want to hear it. Argued Naruto. You can't deny it. Hell, I can smell the hormones from in here and even I don't need that to know that she's in heat. Now if I were you, I'd take advantage of this situation. I foresee a fun night hot and steamy kit making in your near future. Fucking Privet, cried Naruto in his mind. Even without her asenin. He couldn't get away from the damned perverts. Kit, I think it's about time I tell you something else about me. I'm not a pervert, said Kurama as he let out a gawking, and creepy, laugh. I'm, a super pervert. Some hot spring with incredibly hot and sexy women, a show. A wide-haired man sneezed. I sense a disturbance in the perv. Another super pervert has revealed himself. Not wanting to be outdone, Jiraiya leapt up from his hiding place, completely exposing himself and assumed one of his poses. I, the Galeant Jiraiya will seek out this so-called super pervert and challenge him to a contest that only a true super pervert can win. There is only enough room in this world for one super pervert, and that is me. Eek! A pervert. Jiraiya was broken out of his stupor as he braced himself for the incoming beating of womanly fury. What? Karen suddenly stiffened while the team was near exiting Demon Island's cove. This chakra is, Orochimaru. Everyone nearly jumped at this. He's back on the island, atop the debris. She's right. He's standing alongside Yakushi Kabchuo, both of which are looking in this direction, said Hinata. He just seems to be, watching us. Everyone be ready. Something big is bound to come our way, ordered Yamato. Just as Yamato said that, a massive ocean swell rose up in front of the boat, causing Yamato's wooden boat to nearly capsize and dump its precious cargo into the sea. As the boat slid back laying the watery incline, everyone saw a massive blob of water rise up in front of them and block their path. Hee hee, you won't be going anywhere. Yumibozu will make sure of that, snickered a voice from behind the boat. 
everyone turned around to see a man with a larger than normal head wearing a lab coat standing on the water behind them. You have all been quite the thorn, destroying my precious lab and research. That's him, Amachi, commented Suigetsu. He's the one in charge of this base. Glancing over at the boat, Amachi not only noticed his two former prisoners, Karen and Suigetsu, but also a certain purple-haired, unconscious girl. Though it seems that I am grateful you saved my prize test subject. Perhaps if you're lucky enough, I'll keep you alive long enough to be a part of one of my experiments. So you could dissect us like you were going to do with Isaribi? Shouted a furious Naruto. She's not some test subject. She's a person. Say what you want, but just look at her. She's stuck halfway between transformations and can never return back to a full human form. She's been like this ever since I first activated the Kaima genes in her and even I haven't been able to find a way to fully reverse the transformation. Believe me when I say I'm doing her a favor in ending her life so that she doesn't have to live as a monster. Naruto's fists shook in rage at Amachi's statement. No. I know Bakan will be able to do something to help her. Thought the blonde Jinchuriki. I don't give a crap what you say. I know that she can change back and I'll do whatever I need to make it so she can be human again. You call her a monster, well the only monsters I see here are you and that big water blob. Naruto was about to attack Amachi before he was stopped by Yamato. Naruto. We want to take Amachi alive. He could have valuable information on Orochimaru. Kiba and I will handle him while you, Zabuza, and Haku will take care of the ocean monster. Once they can, Sakura and Hinata will get the prisoners to safety and back towards the village. Fine, Kiba kicked this bastard's ass for me, said Naruto. Believe me, there will be more than enough ass kicking to go around, assured Kiba as he, Akamaru, and Yamato prepared to fight the mad scientist. Meanwhile, Naruto lined up beside Zabuza and Haku as the monster completed its form, which still was nothing more than a big mass of water with a swirling and glowing orb in the place where you'd imagine its head. Hey, you think you will be able to take me? You don't understand, with Amobazu, I control the seas, exclaimed Amachi as he activated chakra scalpels in both hands. Let's go Akamaru, exclaimed Kiba. Man Beast Clone. Akamaru transformed into a more feral version of Kiba and the two quickly charged Amachi. Gatsudga. Being a med nin, Amachi was well adept in the art of dodging, but even then found himself hard pressed to avoid the two spiraling fangs drilling towards him at high speeds. Given the speeds at which Kiba and Akamaru were traveling at, he was unable to retaliate in time to tag either with his chakra scalpels. Even still, he wouldn't have had the time to do such as his legs were soon wrapped up in wooden bindings. Did you see that Kabuto? Grinned Orochimaru with a lusting look on his face. It appears to be the Makutan, replied Kabuto. So it does. Apparently, my experiments weren't a complete failure, Kukaku, chuckled Orochimaru. Do you plan on capturing him, Orochimaru-sama? Perhaps this would be an opportune time to claim the Makutan bloodline for our own, suggested Kabuto. As much as I'd like that. I don't like rushing into battles unprepared, said Orochimaru. It is true that I could hold my own against almost all of them, but it's the QB brat that I'm concerned about the most. If rumors out of Iwa are true, then he's been busy over the past few years with my former teammate. But just how strong do you suspect Naruto-kun could have gotten, Orochimaru-sama? During our little meeting in the forest, Naruto-kun tapped into the QB's chakra. I thought that him taping into the beast's power was just a situational thing, the pressure of fighting myself forcing him to subconsciously tap into that power out of survival instinct. While disguised as Shibi, I witnessed him tap further into the beast's chakra to the point where he assumed a four-tailed state and his appearance became more qb like Again, I thought the beast was simply using the gravity of the situation and the despair in Naruto-kun's heart after seeing his own team supposedly killed to try and take hold. But I began to suspect something else once the chakra cloak reverted to a one-tailed state and he actually managed to use the chakra to stabilize Sasuke-kun enough to save him. If the beast was truly trying to take over, it wouldn't have tried to save Sasuke-kun and that pink-haired teammate of theirs, explained Orochimaru. But surely you don't think, gasped Kabuto. Even you witnessed it, in Nuzu. He was in a four-tailed state and appeared able to control himself. I would have been willing to bet that with that much of the beast's chakra in his system, he surely would have given in to the bloodlust and rage, destroying everyone in sight, but yet he didn't attack Jiraiya, said Orochimaru. And how else do you imagine he defeated Han of the Steam Armor? One of the three Jinchuriki known to have full control over their beast's chakra? So then. 
Yes Kabuto, I believe Naruto-kun has become a true Jinchuriki and has full control over the Kyuubi's chakra, Grindrochimaru. Well then, shouldn't we try to eliminate him before he can become too much of a threat? Cautioned Kabuto. I may be strong enough to maintain order in my organization, despite my current injury, but even I wouldn't be able to match the Kyuubi's power at this moment. Besides, Naruto-kun can still be of use to us, chuckled Orochimaru. I think I see. Akatsuki should be making their move soon, shouldn't they? Asked Kabuto. Yes, and if my assumptions are correct, I believe Naruto-kun will prove to be a handful for them, said. Orochimaru. He will end up taking out quite a few of the Akatsuki, lessening the threat they pose to us. But you do plan on eliminating him, don't you? Asked Kabuto. Once he has served his purpose, Kabuto, I will kill him, said Orochimaru. But that will have to wait until I can change bodies to regain the full use of my arms. Only then will I stand a chance against the QB and even then, I wouldn't enter that battle without a certain trump card which I currently do not possess. A sinister grin that. Only the devil's mother could love made residence on Orochimaru's face. Kukaku, yet. Naruto, Haku, and Zabuza quickly jumped to the side avoiding a speeding ball of compressed water that smashed into the ocean they were standing on, splashing everyone around with a frothy spray of ocean water. Sutan, water dragon jutsu, shouted Zabuza as a massive dragon rose out of the sea, turning its rage on the massive watery blob that was Yumabozu. However, just as the dragon wrapped itself around the water monster and prepared to bite down on its head, the dragon was quickly absorbed into Yumabizu, becoming a part of the sea monster itself. Fuck. Water Jutsus won't work on this bastard, swore Zabuza as he watched one of his most powerful Jutsus become absorbed into the sea monster. Multiple spears of ice shot out of the water, surrounding the sea monster, impaling it in many places, but even Haku's attack proved ineffective as the water blob simply twisted and contorted itself out of the ice spears which had imprisoned it. No damage being taken as Yumibozu simply healed itself using the surrounding seas. I can't even damage it as it seems to heal itself using the seas around it, added Haku. Naruto even threw a few wind jutsus at the sea monster, all of which would have proven fatal to a normal opponent. Damn it. Hey Kurama, any thoughts on how to beat this thing? Asked Naruto. Hmm, it looks to be nothing more than a mass of water, held together by a chakra core. So long as there's water, the chakra core will remain intact. Naruto was interrupted from his thoughts as a massive water arm swiped at its three opponents. Both Naruto and Haku were swift enough to dodge the attack, but Zabuza wasn't quite as fast as his two comrades, resulting in his capture by the monster. Zabuza-sama, shouted Haku as Zabuza was swallowed by the monster and then suspended in the water blob, being drowned as if he were captured in a water prison. Wanting to capture another prisoner, Yumibozu slammed his hand down upon Haku. But before the sea monster could capture its next victim, Haku disappeared into his ice mirror, another forming just above the head of Yumibozu. Haku emerged from this mirror and landed atop Yumibozu, his feet beginning to sink into the monster, but that was all he needed. Hyotan, Sub-Zero Entrapment As Haku sent his ice chakra into Yumibozu, the massive water monster immediately began to freeze. Since it was already made of pure water, Haku's freezing proceeded with little resistance, quickly turning the sea monster into a massive iceberg. Naruto jumped up, to around the area where Zabuza had been trapped and with a low-powered Rasengan, shaving through the ice enough to free a now shivering Zabuza. Damn Haku, do you have to be so cruel? Asked Zabuza. I'm sorry Zabuza-sama, but I could not allow that thing to drown you, replied Haku. Hey, now I know how the victims of my water prison jutsu feel, said Zabuza. Badama Rasengan, shouted Naruto as he slammed a large Rasengan, about the size of an inflatable beach ball, into the top of the frozen Yumibozu berg, shattering it into thousands of pieces. No. Yumibozu, shouted Amachi, who had his own hands full dealing with two raging kibas while dodging a number of trees that kept popping up out of the middle of the water. We can't keep this up for much longer. I'm using up more chakra than usual with my wood-style jutsus trying to make them tall enough to reach the oceans surface, thought Yamato. However, despite Amachi's constant dodging he's getting tired. You think you can defeat me? I'll show you and Orochimaru just how powerful the Kaima bloodline can be, shouted Amachi before even he began to undergo a transformation into a Kaima. What the hell? Swore Kiba. So you've been experimenting on yourself as well, deduced Yamato. In this form, you won't be able to stand against me. 
These are the true Kaima genes, refined and altered to make them even stronger than the original. Bragged Amachi. Yeah, well let's see how you fare against me and Akamaru, shouted Kiba. Gatsudga. Given the boost in speed he gained from the Kaima form, Amachi was simply able to sidestep Kiba before shooting a compressed water bullet towards Akamaru, breaking the human-formed canine from his spiraling attack. Akamaru, shouted Kiba as his partner recovered from the attack, although still slightly dazed. Covering for Kiba while Akamaru recovered, Yamato tried to restrain Amachi with his Makuten, binding branches. However, Amachi's new form allowed him to use the sharpened fins on his forearms to slash apart the incoming wooden bindings. Seeing this, Kiba realized that their normal attacks weren't going to work against. I think we're going to have to try that move out, said Kiba, getting a bark from Akamaru. I know fire is weak against water, but we're going to need something stronger to take this guy down. Kiba darted over towards Yamato. Yamato Tanko. Akamaru and I may have an attack that can take this guy out, said Kiba. I see. Do you think you can get him over towards the shore? Asked Yamato as he pointed towards the rocky shoreline of the island cove. Yeah, we'll knock him over there for you, grinned Kiba. You ready Akamaru? Arf. Barked Akamaru, confirming to Kiba he was ready. Akamaru then jumped on Kiba's back in the water. Around the two of them began to boil before the two of them were engulfed in a flare of flames. Katun, two-headed hellhound. As the initial burst of flames cleared, where Kiba and Akamaru once stood, now there was a single two-headed beast with flames rising off the very tips of the monstrous dog's fur. Hey, you think a mood on fire can take me down? Mocked Amachi as he spat a compressed jet of water, trying to extinguish Kiba and Akamaru. The Inuzuka duo opened their mouths and retaliated with a jet of fire, colliding with the jet of water. Normally, the water would overpower the fire, but the combined heat of both Kiba and Akamaru were strong enough to evaporate the water jet, creating a massive cloud of steam that erupted between the two of them. Katun, Hellhound Fangs From out of the cloud of steam, a fiery spiraling inferno came speeding out, straight towards Amachi. Confident in his Kaima form, Amachi stood his ground. To an extent, it worked, if you considered what Kiba's newest jutsu was intended to do. Kiba and Akamaru had developed their Hellhound transformation as a high-powered jutsu with the power to incinerate most opponents. They had combat tested their attack against a group of lower-ranked missing nins during a recent tracking mission with Team 8. The results of the attack surprised even them as there wasn't much more than charred chunks of their opponent's flesh. Once. His clan had heard about his and Akamaru's new jutsu, even they found themselves impressed at the power behind it. Despite the power of their attack, which was already slightly weakened by their watery environment, the flaming attack only managed to leave a few shallow cuts and burns in Amachi's torso. However, the attack was strong enough to send Amachi flying back and slamming into a nearby rock along the shore. As soon as Amachi hit the land, Yamato had finished his preparations and a large tree began to encase the mad scientist. Makuten, tree bind eternal burial. The tree tightened its hold on Amachi, threatening to crush him into dirt, but the pressure halted. Unfortunately, you're still more valuable to us alive. Hey, you fool! Smirked Amachi. Despite being on the brink of consciousness after taking a devastating attack from Kiba and nearly being crushed by a massive tree, Amachi could still muster enough energy. Without me, to control the beast, you can't stop it. Amachi then lost consciousness. Yamato stood there a moment to contemplate what it was that Amachi was referring to, but he had a feeling he would get his answer the moment the water began to spin and swirl. A massive whirlpool erupting in the spot where Naruto and Haku had taken down Yumibozu. To everyone's surprise, the watery blob that was Yumibozu reformed itself, taking on even more sea water than before. In a violent tantrum, Yumibozu struck out at the Konoha ninja. Still in their hellhound form, Kiba and Akamaru retaliated and launched a strong attack against the monster. All Yumibozu had to do was swat the fiery hound away with its hands to extinguish the hellish fires and cancel the jutsu. Being pure water, fire attacks weren't going to work, or would they? Naruto, while that thing is just chakra, it's infused into the water. If we're going to defeat it, we have to get rid of the water, spoke Kurama. Haku's eyes only froze the water, but in this warm environment, the ice quickly melted, freeing the trap chakra infused water. We need to get rid of the water to free the chakra core. Once that's done, this sea monster will be as good as dead. How do you expect to do that? replied Naruto. Fire. It may seem redundant, but fire evaporates water. 
The only problem is that we need a fire big and strong enough to completely evaporate all of the water, explained Kurama. Fox fire should do the trick. What? You want me to go full QB mode now? With Orochi team watching? Argued Naruto. The only thing you've got strong enough is your Kitsune's wrath, and even then the flames aren't widespread enough to engulf the entire monster. We need to take it out in a single blow all at the same time, said Kurama. And it's not like your friends are doing any better. Naruto looked on towards his comrades. Kiba and Akamaru didn't have the power to break through Yumibozu's defenses, Yamao's Jutsus were proving ineffective at containing Yumibozu, Hako tried freezing it, but Yumibozu just broke out of the icy entrapment, and Zabuza's water attacks were simply absorbed into the beast. To make matter worse, Yumibozu had begun launching a series of compressed water bullets towards the ship containing Hinata, Sakura, and the prisoners. Hinata was doing her best with her Jushu, protection of the eight trigrams, but like everyone else, she was starting to show signs of fatigue. Damn it. Wait, couldn't I just call on Chief Toad and use the Katan, Toad Oil Flame Bullet? Kit, this is a salt water environment. If I remember correctly, Toads are freshwater amphibians. Boont is gonna kill you if you summon him to a place like this. You just wanna get out, don't you? Sighed Naruto. Hey, Numnuts is out cold and besides, you promised, replied Kurama. But that about Orochi team? He doesn't know I can do a full QB transformation and I thought Hurasenen and Bachan wanted to keep it that way. Given the mess you caused with Iwa, I wouldn't be surprised if Orochi Maru did know. They even put in their bingo book that you most likely have exceptional control over my powers said Kurama. Humph, like they think you'd even be able to control my powers if it wasn't for me, anyways, I say we remind the snake. Just who's on the top of the food chain? Foxes do not cower to snakes. Naruto just sweat dropped as Kurama continued to rant on. Are you really that bored? Yup, that and I also want to give Woody a good scare. Fine, surrendered Naruto. Outside Naruto's mind, Yumibozu took notice of the blonde who seemed to be in his own world as he pulled back behind his friends. While he was aware of his surroundings, Naruto appeared to have dazed off into his own thoughts, or the ramblings of a certain fox. Forming a giant water fist, Yumibozu slammed it down upon his blonde opponent. To everyone's shock the fist was stopped by nine reddish-orange fox-like tails. Is that? Gasped Kabuto. It appears as if I was correct, grinned Orochimaru. Holy crap, Akamaru, Kiba gasped to his canine partner. TTTT ha! Gulped Yamato. No way, that's, said Sakura as she and Hinata were on the boat a decent distance away from where the battles though still close enough to observe the battles and the giant fox which had just appeared on the battlefield. Naruto-kun, said Hinata. Kyubi. Yep, standing where Naruto was once standing, about to get smashed by a giant watery arm, was now the Kyubi no Yoko. Yumibozu's arm had been completely ripped off by the fox's tails the moment it was caught. This is bad, panicked Yamato. I need to do something to suppress the Kyubi, huh? There's no need, spoke Haku. The Kyubi's never been a problem, and has helped us more than once. In all honesty, I trust the Kyubi as much as I trust Naruto-san. And besides, if you look at those eyes, they hold no hostility, towards us at least. Tsunade-sama mentioned that the Kyubi was not a problem. I believe you just need to trust Naruto-san. A weary Yamato hesitated for a moment, but relaxed his guard slightly. The Kyubi mode Naruto turned his full attention to the giant water blob. Once Naruto saw that no one was around, he took a deep breath and unleashed an inferno of golden white flames, engulfing the sea monster completely and rapidly boiling the water surrounding it and any water that Yumibozu could tap into to reform itself. By the time the flames died down, the water where Yumibozu once stood continued to boil. Told you that would do it, bragged Kurama. Yeah, but that was kind of overkill, don't you think? replied Naruto. And your point is? Sensing the presence of a certain snake, Naruto turned his attention towards the island and began charging a rather large-tailed beast bomb. Orochimaru-sama, gulped Kabuto, seeing the dense orb of chakra being aimed at them. It appears as if it's time to leave. Let's go Kabuto, I've got work that needs to be done, hissed Orochimaru as the snake Sanin and his apprentice were engulfed by a flame that worked its way up their bodies, causing whatever it had already burned to simply disappear. The tailed beast bomb was fired towards the two and collided with the island, resulting in a massive explosion that leveled most of whatever remained on the island. Damn, they got away just before the tailed beast bomb hit, swore Naruto. 
Everyone looked up at the towering QB, wondering what was going to happen next. Yamato had his wood style at the ready just in case Naruto truly had lost it to the QB. To everyone's relief, the figure of the QB began to recede until all that was left was Naruto. He looked over to see the stupefied looks on his comrades' faces and just grinned while rubbing the back of his head. Okay, so maybe that was a little too much. Naruto, Yamato said while making his creepy star no jutsu. It appears as if I will have to rule by fear. Gah, shouted a freaked out Naruto as he cowered back towards Haku and Zabuza. You can transform into a demonic fox, yet you're still scared of a silly face? Mocked Zabuza. You have no idea just how creepy that is, shouted Naruto. The Konoha team and the villagers who had been rescued found little resistance, except for a rather large catfish that continuously taunted Akamaru. Needless to say, Wet Dog Scent did not make for a pleasant trip back to the port. Upon arriving, the entire village was ecstatic with the arrival of nearly two dozen of their missing brethren. I thank you very much for what you have done for our village, bowed to Kurama. You have no idea how grateful everyone is for your efforts. Please, it was our pleasure, said Yamato. Most of them are healthy, however there are a few who will be accompanying us back to our village to retrieve treatment due to being experimented on. I completely understand, replied to Kurama, he looked over towards the unconscious Amachi. So he is the one responsible for my people's suffering? Yes, he was one of Orochimaru's subordinates and the one behind the kidnappings and experimentation, replied Yamato. He saw the vengeful look on Takarama's face. I can assure you, Takarama-san, that Amachi will be made to answer for his crimes, however, I must apologize that he will have to face it back at our village. He could possess valuable information pertaining to other activities of Orochimaru. It is a shame that my people will not be the ones to get their justice, but I can understand where you're coming from, said Takarama. Finishing his conversation with Takarama and the rest of the villagers, Yamato turned to his team. Right, looks like we're all done here. I've sent a report to the Hokage and we'll await her orders. I suspect she'll send an Anbu team to escort our prisoners. Yamato nodded towards Amachi, Karen, and Suigetsu. Hey! Nichin's not a prisoner, declared Naruto. I'm sorry Naruto but she is to be considered a prisoner until the village can ensure she's not a threat," said Yamato. Naruto protested but was shut up. Do you remember that she accompanied Yakushi Kabuto to raid the vaults of Ozushi Ogakura for Orochimaru himself? Yeah, but she was being manipulated by the bastard," retorted Naruto. That does not matter. Tandi will determine her fate. If she cooperates fully and is deemed not to be a threat to the village, she could slide by with a prohibition sentence. I suggest you don't do anything that would jeopardize her best case scenario," explained Zabuza, familiar with Konoha's Anbu workings. Believe me, I wouldn't wish Tandi on most people. But if she cooperates, the worst she'll have to face is a mind walk by Inoiki and that's actually harmless. I know you consider her your family, but just letting things play their course is the best you can do right now. Don't worry brat, I believe your cousin there will get off easy. As for Suigetsu, well let's just say if he makes another go for my sword. Evil glints appeared in Zabuza's eyes as he glared at Suigetsu. I'll personally deliver his ass as a present to that sexy bitch in Tandi. Sexy bitch? Questioned Naruto. Yeah, the one with the huge tits and curvy figure, all tightly wrapped up in fishnets that look like they're about ready to just burst. And that wicked smile that sends shivers down your spine, yet turns you on at the same time. Oh yeah. She's definitely one sexy bitch, replied Zabuza as he fanaticized about a certain purple-haired Kunoichi in the Tandi department. Is he talking about Onko? Thought Naruto. Oh so many possibilities. Thought Kurama to himself. Two days passed with the team from Konoha residing in the village until the Anbu team arrived. Sai had awoke in the morning after his painful scolding, only to find that. The pain radiating from his groin was still too intense and he was bedridden all day with an ice pack wrapped around his crotch. Following Hinata's little outburst, the young Huga beauty couldn't help but turn red whenever she was spotted with Naruto by those who had witnessed it and poor Naruto was stuck with Kurama's perverted taunts without any relief in sight. Sakura had attempted to awaken Isaribi from her induced slumber, but the moment she did that, the girl began to yell out in pain and the Kama transformation advanced. The pink-haired medic proceeded to use an anesthesia seal she had learned during her training under her master to keep Isaribi sedated and to stave off the transformation until Tsunade could get a good look at what was going on. As for the villagers who had the Kaima genes introduced to them, 
Sakura was able to concoct enough serum to keep them from reverting back into a the chyma form so long as they took it at regular intervals. However, if she hoped to fully cure them, then she would need resources that were only available back in Konoha. The team from Konoha was now currently waiting at the gates to the small fishing village in the land of seas. Yamato had received word that the Anbu would be arriving shortly and once they were there to escort the prisoners, namely Amachi, they would begin their three-day journey back to Konoha. Out of the forest, four Anbu appeared and the attention of Naruto and Sakura were immediately drawn towards the one with a dog mask and gravity-defying silver hair. The dog-masked Anbu simply tilted his head, as if he were an intrigued dog, before Naruto and Sakura simultaneously shouted. You're late. Dog merely sweat dropped before waving to the two of them. He then proceeded to do something rarely done in Anbu and removed his mask, revealing to Naruto and Sakura, another mask. However, this mask only covered the bottom portion of their Jonin sensei's face. Well well, if it isn't Naruto and Sakura. I see you two have grown, Kakashi smiled. The way they present themselves and even simply the very aura they give off. They've gotten stronger, a lot stronger. Sakura immediately realized something. Kakashi sensei, where's Sasuke kun? Yeah, where is team? I can't wait to kick his ass, D by O, declared Naruto. HN. Came from an Anbu wearing a hawk mask. Still dreaming I see, Dobe. Like Kakashi, Hawk removed his mask, revealing none other than a pair of red Sharingan eyes on a familiar face. Sasuke kun. Chirped Sakura. Sasuke's revealing didn't only catch the attention of Sakura, but also of a certain redhead. Who is that handsome guy? Ooh. Perhaps being escorted by him won't be too bad after all. To Karen's utter horror, Sakura was immediately upon Sasuke, planning a large kiss on the lips of her estranged love interest and surprising almost everyone, even slightly Sasuke. Since when did team get into Anbu? Asked Naruto, after giving Sasuke and Sakura just enough time to get reacquainted with one another. Well, eventually we both got tired of doing nothing but training and figured that some mission experience would do us better, spoke Kakashi. This is a special arrangement allowed by the Hokage herself to reinstate me into Anbu and to allow Sasuke to enter Anbu for the duration of a year. This is actually our last mission for the time being. Whether or not Sasuke continues as Anbu in the future is actually up to him, but once we return to the village, the three of you will be reforming good old Team 7 for a while. Team 7 ha? Huh? Reminis Naruto. It really has been a while, hasn't it? Said Sakura. HN, scoffed Sasuke before he sighed. I will admit. Missions in Anbu have typically been rather smooth and it has been a bit quiet without the Dobi to screw everything over. Oi. If you think I'm such a screw up, come over here and I'll show you just how much I can screw you up. Naruto and Sasuke were instantly deadlocked into an intense staring contest. It hasn't even been 5 minutes and those two are already at each other's throats, sighed Kakashi. Thwack. Ow. Both Naruto and Sasuke were rubbing the bumps on their heads as Sakura stood behind them with her hands crossed and foot tapping. Will you two stop it? I will not be having the two of trying to kill each other, again. Both Naruto and Sasuke managed a slight grin. Konoha. And that is our report, Hokage-sama, explained Yamato as the eight Konoha shinobi had just recently arrived from the land of seas. Tsunade had trouble containing herself after hearing of Orochimaru's endeavors and some of the research that had been conducted on innocent civilians. That's just like Orochimaru and his subordinates, going beyond that which could be even remotely considered human just to satisfy his sick fetishes, growled Tsunade. Shizun. Tsunade-sama, addressed Shizun. Get the girl Isaribi and the infected villagers ready for treatment. Begin an analysis immediately. By the time I get there, I want to know just what this Kaima gene is and if it can be isolated. I'll be over myself shortly to begin searching for a cure, addressed Tsunade. Hi, Tsunade-sama, bowed Shizuna as she quickly darted out the door, Tantan running closely behind. I've read your report on that serum, Sakura, and I must say I'm impressed you were able to make something that effective given the limited resources you had, not to mention the crunch on time, said Tsunade to her student. Your findings will certainly go a long way towards treating those villagers. Thank you. Shishu, bowed Sakura. Amachi will certainly pay for his crimes against humanity, not to mention the work he's done for that traitor, said Tsunade. However, first I think Iviki will enjoy some company. He has been rather bored lately. Tsunade motioned to one of the two remaining on Boo and they quickly took Amachi to Iviki for some quality time with Konoha's foremost expert in the field of torture. 
Tsunade Bakken, what will happen to Karen Nijin? Asked Naruto. Nijin? Tsunade said, raising her eyebrow. Well, not really Nijin. She's more like a second cousin but that still doesn't mean she's not family, explained Naruto. If she's cooperative and Inoiki's findings come up positive on her being more a prisoner than an accomplice, I'll push for her to be given a prohibition period and then we can work on incorporating into the village as ninja. Rags. She appears to have a sensory ability that I think our village will benefit greatly from, said Tsunade. And it will give the Hugas some competition in the sensory department. The same will go for Hozuki Suigetsu, said Tsunade. He'd better keep those hands off my blade, said Zabuza. Tsunade sighed. Anyways, you're all dismissed. Kakashi, Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke please remain here for a moment. With that, everyone but the specified four left the Hokage's office. Now, as you're all aware, it's been nearly three years since arrangements were made to have the three of you train privately. As per the original agreement, it is time for all of you to regroup as a team. As of now, Team Kakashi is officially reformed and will stay that way for the next two years. This will make it roughly six years since your team was originally formed. Kakashi, you're a Jonin and still in charge of the team. Sakura, Sasuke, Naruto, all three of you have been made Chunin and based on the feedback I've gotten from Jiraiya, Kakashi, and myself, I'd say that you're all Jonin level. While part of me is tempted to just promote the three of you, I do believe some more experience would do you all some good and you'll be eligible to take the Jonin exams in a year and a half. Still, I believe this team is more than capable of handling some difficult missions and as such, I'll be treating this as a team of Jonin instead of a team of Chunin led by a Jonin commander. Any questions? You don't need to worry Bakken, D by O. Declared Naruto. A tick mark appeared on Tsunade's forehead due to Naruto using the B word. Anything to say, Kakashi? Asked Tsunade. Yes. While I have been working with Sasuke for some time, I am curious as to not only how strong both Naruto and Sakura are, but also how well the three of you work together, said Kakashi. Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, I think you know where. With that, Kakashi shunshined away. As I promised, he's yours again, spoke Jiraiya as he met up with Kakashi somewhere in Konoha. I fear Akatsuki will soon make their move. It's been three years now and it won't be long before they make their move. So you think they'll make a move on Naruto soon? Asked Kakashi. Most certainly. And the other Jin Chiriki, said Jiraiya. Speaking of Jin Chiriki, Han, are the rumors true? Did he kill Han? Asked an intrigued Kakashi. He didn't kill Han, though he did defeat him, said Jiraiya. We being hunted by Iwa and we fled. To me, the three Anbu weren't much of a threat, but throw Han into the mix and I would have been hard pressed. However, I feel I still could have won that battle if I pulled out all the stops. But Naruto was present, said Kakashi. Yeah. I doubt I would have been able to keep tabs on all of them and that turned out to be the case. Han got through to Naruto while I was busy with the Iwa Anbu, explained Jiraiya. But you said Naruto defeated Han, said Kakashi. And doesn't Han supposedly have control over the bijou inside of him? He did, and yes Han can control a full bijou transformation into the Gobi, said Jiraiya. But then Naruto, gasped Kakashi. Han's not the only one who can control a full bijou transformation, said Jiraiya. Kakashi just stood there, taking in what exactly Jiraiya had said. Before walking off, Jiraiya gave Kakashi one last piece of advice. Don't underestimate him tomorrow. It may be just a test, but if you don't fight him with the intent to kill, you won't even stand a chance, warned Jiraiya. And add Sasuke and Sakura into the mix, are you certain you can take all three of them if even Naruto might be too much for you? Kakashi stood there, thinking. Perhaps Master Jiraiya is right. Even Sasuke has proven to be a tough match and if Naruto's advanced as far as I think. Kakashi's thoughts were interrupted as he was greeted by Spandex. Accompanying the Spandex was a rather large blade that wanted Kakashi's head. Kakashi! Growled Zabuza. You left me alone for three years with him. Do you have any idea of how many of his stupid rival challenges I've had to endure? Yosh! Now that Kakashi has returned, we can certainly see who has grown more over the years, exclaimed Guy. Not again! whimpered Zabuza. Kakashi simply ignored Guy's proclamation and returned to his thoughts. Hmm, I wonder. So Kakashi, what do you say? Will today be your lucky day or will Konoha's noble Gree Beast go to 53 to 52 against the fabled Sharingan Kakashi? exclaimed Guy. Huh? Oh Guy, did you say something? 
yawned Kakashi as he collectively wiped his ear. Guy deadpanned. Once again Kakashi, your hipness knows no bounds. Suna. Gara, the Kaze Kage, and his council were assembled in Suna's council chambers, some very interesting news having reached their ears. Our village's power has finally stabilized and we maintain good relations with all of our allies. From the Siculum changes to our training program we brought in from Konoha, I look forward to seeing the results in the upcoming Chunin exams, spoke one of the council members. This close to the Chunin exams, there's been a bad rumor, spoke another councilman. Bad rumor? Well what is it, Yuri? Asked a third council member. Jiraiya of the legendary Sanin has updated our information regarding an organization called Akatsuki. He believes they are preparing to move on the Jinshuriki throughout the world, which means. Yura looked over towards Gara. That Kaze Kage-sama could very much be in danger. Nonsense, our Kaze Kage is stronger than ever. Boasted one of the council members. Still, I believe these individuals shouldn't be underestimated, advised Yura. According to Jiraiya-sama, two known members of Akatsuki are Uchiha Itachi and Hoshigaki Kisame. This sent whispers throughout the room. Both Itachi and Kisame were infamous as S-rank criminals throughout the shinobi world. Yura then interrupted the side conversations. I have also heard rumors that Orochimaru himself was once a member of this organization, the same man responsible for the death of our previous Kaze Kage. Gara took this information and processed it. He remembered the time back during the Chunin exams in Kumo when Naruto had also mentioned this Akatsuki and warned the rest of the Jinchuriki present about them. Finally, after some more side conversing, Gara spoke, putting an end to those conversations. I acknowledge that this Akatsuki organization is a serious potential threat, not only to our own village, but also our allies. Still, I am Kaze Kage and I will do what must be done to keep this village safe. Yura smiled at the resolve of his Kaze Kage, but zoned out for a slight moment as something else came upon his mind. Outside Suna. Two cloaked figures strode through the desert towards the entrance to the pass leading to Suna. So, the ones Orochimaru manipulated our head, yeah spoke the taller of the figures. It seems for some reason, he leaked our information and turned traitor. We don't have a choice it seems. I don't know what he's like after using that jutsu either, said the shorter figure before looking over at the bag his partner was carrying. Is it all right with just that bag? Our opponent uses the powers of a jinchuriki. My jutsus are all artistic, so I came with my favorite, number 18. After all, our opponent is the Aichibi, Un replied the taller figure as he reached into his bag and pulled out a lump of clay before the mouths on his hand ingested the clay and began chewing. As the two figures approached the cliffs that hid Suna, they instantly drew the attention of the guards. Captain Yura. Red clouds on black cloaks approaching. It must be them. Called out one of the guards. Don't worry, it'll all be over soon, said Yura. The following morning, Konoha. Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura arrived at the nostalgic site of Training Ground 7, the very place where they became Janan. It sure has been a while hasn't it? Smiled Naruto as he looked at the training post, the image of him being tied to it coming back. There's no way Kakashi Sensei's gonna beat me this time around. So how long do you think we'll be waiting for Kakashi Sensei this time around? Asked Sakura. HN, considering it's almost 10 now, I'd say he should be showing shortly, replied Sasuke. Am I really getting that predictable? Called out Kakashi as he appeared on top of one of the training posts. I think you three know the deal. Kakashi held out two bells and earned a smirk from his students. However, he reached back into his pouch and pulled out four more bells, throwing three of the six to Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke. I thought about it and if what I've heard is correct, I realized that I would need something different to oppose the three of you. You all seem much stronger, so I altered the typical test slightly to provide more of a challenge. What do you mean altered? Asked Sakura. Wait, if we are each getting a bell and you have three more, then. I see you've already figured out my adjustment, said Kakashi. You're right. I won't be your only opponent. Kakashi tied one bell to his belt and gave the other two bells a toss to the empty space on either side of him. However, the bells were quickly caught as two figures, Kakashi's team appeared at Kakashi's side. Now that's more like it, smirked Sasuke. All right, bring it on your guys, D by O. Sakura decided to remain quiet, but voiced her anticipation with the sound of cracking knuckles. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, 
and I'm signing off.